Welcome back. I'm Adam for Ven Audio. See? By now, we've imported our OMF, organised it into our templates, chosen the recordings we want to use, and done a little bit of cleaning and noise reduction. We're nearly ready to start smoothing everything out. And of course, catching anything that wasn't clean from the first pass, which is probably going to be quite a lot. So, I'm going to get rid of the playlists for now. The next step is going to be extending out the handles so we can do our fades quicker. This can be quite tedious, so we're going to need keyboard shortcuts. Use Command, Alt, Plus or Minus to change your nudge value. We want five frames. Then, go to the beginning. Take one track of dialogue, press Tab, press Shift Tab, select that clip, Command Plus, twice. Extend it 10 frames out, Alt minus, extend it 10 frames the other way. Tab, Tab, Shift Tab, same again. What this will do is give us little handles on every single region. This means we can see how much space we have to fade with. Yeah, it takes time, but with the keyboard shortcuts, you'll get it pretty fast. Probably not this fast. Okay, done. All three tracks. Now we can see every handle and we can make our cuts visually, which is quicker. All right, let me show you this in action. Maybe a section with three clips isn't the best for a first example, but now eh, you can handle it. Just ignore the upper one for now. Yes, yes. All right, All right lad. Our extra bits have given us two all right lads, but now we can see in the waveforms where we need to cut. Hit S to cut. Tiny bit extra on there. Listen to each bit separately using Shift S to solo the track. Shift P apostrophe F. And your fade's done. And that's how we're going to fade every clip. All right, that For this bit, where we're layering in the radio mic, hit Command and T to trim out the bit you don't need. Cut off this spike here, this lump here. Fade it as before. Fade, fade. Listen. Yes. All right, lad. What's going on? Sounds all right. So basically, using all the extra bits we've added, make the cuts and fades visually first, not fading over the dialogue, then check each bit. Carry on like that. The problem comes when the actors have overlaps on a cut. Here you can see in the waveforms that the lines are blurred into one another. Different slates, a cut in the middle. This can get pretty tricky. Take a listen, this is just the one track. My phone. All right, chill. And once more. My phone. All right, chill. There's not quite enough of a gap between phone and all right, chill to let us do a smooth fade. Let's have a go. And we need Henry's all right, which starts here. So we cut there. All right, chill, just you. But you can still hear a little bit of Armand's phone. All right, here's Armand's track. You've lost my phone. All right, chill. Okay, so what happens if we make the cut there just before all right? thing for me and you've lost my phone. All right, chill, just use my phone to... We end up cutting off Armin a bit. Let's try taking that down slower instead. You've lost my phone. All right, chill, just use my phone to... Get we get a very slight double instance of the beginning of Henry's All Right. Thing for me and you've lost my phone. All right, chill, just use my phone to get yours back. But I think that's the best we can do for now and I think no one will notice. You can see the benefit of having the clips you want to fade between on two separate tracks. It allows you to work on each one independently, and you can make a precise fade exactly where you need it. Let's skip on to the next one now. Have a listen to what's going on here. I'm going to call your phone when they don't know your, your number. number. We've got a bit of a double arm in there. Let's check his track first. Don't know your number. Okay, that's nice and clean. That's not overlapped. Look. As for Henry's track. Your number. Look, he's belling me now. Yeah, that's where the overlap is. Right here. Number. Look, what can happen a lot is the actor will be at a different pitch or energy take to take. Armand's actually pretty consistent here. So let's look at making the cut mid-line. Take a listen and see if you can find out where our cutting point would be. How are my clientele going to call your phone when they don't know your number? Oh, he's me so if we need to switch seamlessly between one take and another, 
The first thing to try is to make the cut on an unvoiced consonant. That's right, an unvoiced consonant. Try putting your hand on your voice box and making a s and then a z. You should feel some vibrations on z, but none on s. So some unvoiced consonants would be s, f, sh, etc. You want to try and make these kind of cuts on these sounds instead of vowels and stuff because the pitch is always the same. Okay, so have another listen and try and spot where we're going to make our cut. How are my clientele going to call your phone when they don't know your number? Oh, we want one that's around the video cut. Can you find it? Going to call your phone when they don't. Correct answer is f. Well done. So let's zoom in and see if we can make a cut there. The waveforms look pretty similar, so we might be in luck. Okay, so here's our f. These consonants tend to look like this on a waveform. Let's make a cut here. Gonna call your phone. One here. Let's just have a quick listen with no fades. How am my clientele gonna call your phone when they don't know your number? Oh, he's belling me now. Okay, that might be workable, but the, the tone between the two lines is perhaps a little too different. We can also try a cut point in between the words, like here. Gonna call your phone when they don't know your number. Oh, he's belling me now. Again, the tone sounds quite different, so I don't think this is going to work. But we've come this far, so let's go through it and see. Take a copy of this up to our work track. The work track has Elastic Audio enabled, monophonic algorithm. What that means is, if we go up here and we take our time stretch, we end up with a stretchy bit of audio with non-destructive time stretching. If we don't have it on a track with Elastic Audio enabled, we get destructive time stretching. It writes a new file every time, and it sounds like hell. So, undo all of that and use the work track. All I want to do here is warp view, just pop a few markers in here, and get this line to fall in sync with the next one. Make a cut there. Let's take a listen. How am my clientele going to call your phone when they don't know your number? Oh, he's now that kind of works. We get a bit of a change in tone, as I said before. It's an option, I suppose. And, well, I hope it's a technique you can use in the future. I'm going to pop it in the playlist for now as a possibility. Let's try another cut point. Phone when they don't know your number. If we listen to each track, we can kind of work out the cutting point, which is like going to be least noticeable to the audience. Like where they're both talking at once, and a sound effect is going on at the same time. Gonna call your phone when they don't know your number. He's telling me now. So this one relies on the audience being kind of confused and overloaded with everything going on at once. How am my clientele going to call your phone when they don't know your oh, number? he's belling me now. Our other option was something more like this. How am my clientele going to call your phone when they don't know your number? Oh, he's belling me now. So, neither one's perfect, but overlaps are tough. To recordists and actors out there, do watch out for them on set. Hopefully, though, you'll be able to try out some of these tricks and avoid some ADR. Good luck phone when they don't know your oh, number. He's telling me now. Take a listen to this. It's just Henry's track for now. Phone. How many phones you robbed today? And uh, Nicole's track? Type of phone. It's Nicole's line, what type of phone, followed by Henry. If we look at the rest of Nicole's shot, we can see Henry came in here. However, the editor has placed the next line here. In the video edit, the editor can extend or shorten the pauses between lines, speeding up or slowing down the pace of the scene from the original performance. If they shorten the pauses, great, we just cut out some of the space in between. However, if they extend the pauses, it leaves a gap. Let's look at how to fill that gap. We'd like to fill that with Atmos tone, so the obvious place to look is in the Wild Atmos track. Bring exterior state up to the work track. And we need something that matches Nicole's shot. We're going from Nicole to Nicole with a small Henry bridge. Have a listen to Nicole's background noise. What type of phone? Oh, I had all my shit on the table. 
So it's consistent between the two shots. It's the same slate, so no problem. Listen to Henry's noise. How many phones you robbed today? His is a lot quieter. We need to bring that up to Nicole's level. Listen to Nicole. Uh, how do Wild track. And they sound completely different. Maybe another part? No, it's all a kind of high-pitched gas escaping sound. Let's lose that. Let's check the other one, the interior one. Sounding a bit better. Let's listen to Nicole again. Uh, how do Not quite. I don't think we're going to be able to use these wild tracks. So we need something that's going to match slate 81 for about one and a half, two seconds. Let's look in our clip for slate 81. We've got a bit of tone here, but that's less than a second. So we'd have to look at looping it. Well, that's never going to work. Okay, just to prove it. Okay, that's not an option. We've got a lot of standing going on here. Maybe that's going to help us more. Yeah, it sounds pretty similar. Type of phone. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good match. Just check it's clean, select the bit we need, put it in the right place, do our fades. We want this noise going on all over Henry, and then to smoothly fade it into Nicole. So let's delete this bit of dialogue here and fade on the empty bits. Take a listen. Of phone. How many phones did you robbed today? Oh, I had all my so we filled our gap, we just need to match the background noise, which takes me conveniently to... So we're pretty close with this, it's just not smooth. Let's try bringing this up a bit to start with. What type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Uh, how... That's pretty good. We can maybe smooth it out with a slower fade in. What type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Whoops, I got this fade. What type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? So with this, we get a bit of a dip in the level of the Atmos. Here, I'd, I'd put a break then use clip gain to bring it up. What type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Oop, bit too much, rain it in. What type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Oh, I, had all my I think that's sounding pretty smooth by now. Ooh, there's a little section at the end about which fade to use when. Notice here we need to use the equal gain fade for a smooth transition. What type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Oh, I had all my shit on the... Now obviously it's not perfect, but it's just gently easing the viewer from one kind of background noise to another. So, I think we're going to go with that. I honestly didn't intend to end up making an advert for isotope noise reduction, but let's see how it would have gone if I had used it that time. In this alternate reality, I just have a bridging tone bit between the two shots. I'm not layering in a whole other background noise under Henry. Don't bother previewing an isotope, we need to hear the transition. Before me, now where the is it? I mean, what type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Oh, I had all my it's not too bad. We probably need to use a bit of the new Isotone to make the bridge. Let's grab that and replace our old one. Nice big fade there. Have a listen. Is it? I mean, what type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? Oh, I had all my. Once more. I mean, what type of phone? How many phones you robbed today? The level of noise is a lot lower overall, so we have a bit more tolerance with our fades. We could also put in an Atmos underneath the whole thing to smooth it out a bit more. Alright, little bonus for you here. I'm sure, like me, the old me, you've wondered, what's the difference between that straight line fade and that curvy line fade? Well, look no further. The answer is right here. Alright, here's your cut. Be in this mess. All right, man. So, as always, we put a fade on. We wouldn't be in this mess. All right, man. And what do you get? A surge in background noise. Well, hey, maybe we can smooth that out with a longer fade, right? We wouldn't be in this mess. All right, man. Wrong. We now have a slow surge. Look, it's the same take, same background noise. Try an equal gain fade.
We wouldn't be in this mess. All right, man. And it's fine. So, the answer to the question is, use a straight liney fade when the two clips are the same or very similar. We wouldn't be in this mess. All right, man. So, thanks for watching part three. By now, our dialogue is imported, cut up, replaced with clean takes, denoised, renoised, faded, smoothed over, and we're ready to look at levels.